Hey, Dr. Berg here. I'm sitting in my massage table here, about ready to do a little instruct on this subject called pH. Um, I want to explain exactly what it is, all the myths. There's so much misinformation on the alkaline acid levels, like everyone is too acid and all diseases come from being too acid and you need to alkalize or die. Um, let's get into the truth of what pH is in the simplicity of how to understand it. Okay, so let's make pH really, really simple, okay? Um, when, you, when you took chemistry, they might have uh, used all these words like the potentiation of hydrogen and all these things. I don't want to complicate it. I want to make it really simple. So pH is the measurement of acid and alkaline. So that's all you need to know about what it is. Now, it goes from a scale from 1 to 14 with a neutral being 7, okay? Now, that would be like distilled water. So, what happens when the pH goes down, it's more acid. Lower number is acid from the 7. When it goes higher than 7, it becomes more alkaline. And the thing to know is that when you go from a 7 to an 8, it's by a power of 100. So, it's, uh, it's very, very, um, it's not just going up at one number, it's like magnified by 100. Uh, for example, um, the reference point that we use for pH is in the blood. In other words, the blood, the body will do whatever it can to keep the blood at a certain constant level. And the pH of the blood has a very narrow range between 7, slightly alkaline, 7.4, 7.34 to 7.45. I mean, it's like it has to be within that range. If it drops by one degree, like in the 6, you will have a coma. You'll be in a diabetic coma or something like that. So you will not be able to live. So we really want to, uh, when people ask, what is the pH? Well, what fluid are you talking about? Are you talking about the blood? Are you talking about the bowel? Because every different body fluid has a different pH. I mean, your stomach should be between like one and three. Like that's almost like battery acid. You can digest uh, like something very, very metallic at that level. And then you have the, adren the inside of the adrenal gland, which is a stress gland. That should be pretty acid uh, because those are the, all the different adrenaline uh, hormones and uh, uh, things like that. So apparently it's, it needs that acidity. Then we've got the large bowel, which is, should be 5.5. That's very, very acid. Um, because remember, it's coming down from the neutral down to 6, down to 5. So each one that goes down is by a power of 100. So it's magnified. Urine should be acid, sweat should be slightly acid, and then we got, we have all the different things that should be alkaline. The fluid in and outside the cell should be slightly alkaline. The tears should be alkaline. The fluid around your brain should be about 7.5, that's alkaline. And then of course you got the blood, and then the pancreatic fluids. All that fluid coming down from the pancreas and the bile, which is the gallbladder, that needs to be very alkaline to neutralize the stomach acid, which is so acid. So we have this interesting uh, differentiation between one part of the body and another and different pHs to, to create motion and to create movement and to counter each other as well. Because if that food stays acid into the small intestine, you can burn a hole through it, and that's called an ulcer. And uh, so there's... You, you really need to identify what tissue you're talking about when you're talking about pH. So, so that's kind of like a, an overview of what pH is in the different fluids. And the next part, let's talk about what happens when you're too acid or too alkaline. Okay, so we have two categories here. We have too acid, too alkaline. Okay, so if the body becomes one way, and I'm talking about blood. I'm using blood as a reference because... Um, what happens is that every other body part will work around the blood. For example, um, your body will alter a certain pH in your brain just to keep your blood normal. It will pull from this fluid to keep your blood normal, okay, because the blood is the constant. It's the equilibrium reference point that we call homeostasis, which is the body's ability to adapt to its environment but keep a constant internal environment. Okay, two acid, you're going to be coughing coughing too much, that dry cough. Um, and that's why uh, an interesting remedy for that would be uh, calcium. Uh, it tends to lower the coughing. But you have to realize something, but if your body um, is too alkaline, you, don't, you won't be able to absorb calcium because calcium is absorbed in an acid medium. 
but it's interesting that calcium is good for coughing. It'll stop it. But just make sure you don't take calcium carbonate. That's limestone. You'd be better off chewing on the cement outside because it's rocks. Coma. We talked about that in the last section. Diabetic coma, where the blood sugars go up and down. You become very, very acid, and the pH drops in. You can go into a coma. That's a very low uh, blood sugar situation. It could be also high as well. So uh, irregular heartbeats. Um, it's uh, a body that's too acid. So the, the thing that I want you to get out of is treating the symptom. That's why I don't recommend if you're too acid to take an alkalizer or take something for it, especially long term, maybe short term, but not long term, because there's things called alkaline water right now where I've seen people taking that way too long and then the bodies swing over to the opposite side or they take different remedies to treat the symptom. Symptoms are not errors. They're not mistakes. They're, the body's reacting to some, something, in, something wrong. It's adapting to something, and we have to understand what's going on. I'll get into the causes of this in the next section, but I just want to explain the symptoms here. Um, but Because you imagine you could treat each one of these with a different drug. Um, so increased heart rate, weakness in the muscles, um, nausea, nausea. We've got sleeping but wired. So you're tired, but you're wired. You can't sleep. You can't wind down. Well, calcium is a good remedy for that, too. Um, but we want to find out why you're too acid. Um, sighing frequently. So it's like, especially at night. So you can't seem to get air. So, so what happens is that an acid body will tend to heart to work harder. And I have a lot of people that will just take calcium. They can breathe better. They can actually feel better just to balance their pH out. But sighing frequently is an acidic body. Anxious, anxiety, it's all part of that same thing. And you will not be able to hold your breath. So if you really want to know if you're too acid, try to hold your breath. You will not be able to hold it past 20 seconds. Okay, because you don't have, it's kind of like um, um, you don't have any oxygen because you're running on, um, your body's so acidic, it uh, doesn't have any air, so it's going to run out of oxygen real fast. Okay, so we got alkaline. Now let's let's look at this. Decrease potassium. Um, in other words, when your body is too alkaline, you don't absorb minerals, especially potassium or calcium. Now what happens without potassium is you're going to crave sweets. You're not going to store sugar, so you're going to have hypoglycemia, low blood sugar issues. You you'll get cramps in your calves. Um, you'll have problems with um, heart arrhythmias too. And uh, uh, but since potassium is a physiological relaxer, you'll have a hard time relaxing and winding down. And then the pulse rate also can go up from that, um, just like right here. So you could have both symptoms right here. Twitching on the left eyelid, that's an alkaline state as well because the calcium is no longer in the bone. It's coming out of solution and depositing on top of the bone and top of the tissues, not in the muscle or the bone as bursitis, tendonitis, um, arthritis, um, bone spurs, kidney stones, even gallstones, tartar on the teeth, cataracts, that's calcium on the eye, or twitching on the left eyelid. So that would be one of the symptoms. Hyperventilation, um, breathing a lot, very excessively. Arthritis, allergies are in alkaline state. Um, and one thing about arthritis I forgot to mention is that when you take uh, an orange, orange juice, and you drink it, um, that citrus, which is an acid, is very different. It'll turn into an alkaline state in your body and aggravate an already alkaline body. So one symptom for her to know that you're too alkaline is to, to eat a bunch of oranges or orange juice and see if you have pain in an hour after that. If you do, you're too alkaline. Um, okay, so we have allergies um, and, and even the immune system. Um, your immune system is stimulated with acids. And that's why you may think that when you take vitamin C, you can get rid of a cold or get rid of um, mucus and things like that. It's not the vitamin C. It's the ascorbic acid that will do it. The problem is most people take the wrong kind. They take uh, synthetic and they don't take the natural stuff and they end up throwing something else off. You'd be much better off doing apple cider vinegar. Uh, it works even better because there's no side effects. So allergies, um, bone spurs. Yeah. Calcium starts building up because your pH is off. Uh, low thyroid, and then we talked about the calcium deposits too that start building up in different body tissues. So, so those are the different um, 
characteristics of the different things that could happen if you're one way versus the other. So in the next part, let's just talk about what causes these things. So check this out. Two acid, what happens, what, what creates that state is ketosis. Ketosis is a form of uh, fat breakdown in the body, and it could also be protein breakdown too, by being on it's like two sources. One is um, very low carbohydrate in the diet and high protein, like in the Atkins diet, or it could come from a diabetes situation. So if a client comes to my office and their urine is, um, has ketones in it uh, and they ate sugar that day, I know it's not a healthy ketosis. So ketosis is, ketosis is okay, it could be a healthy state, but it could put you into an uh, acidic state in which you need to balance it out with more alkalizing agents. That's why we need to add more vegetables. That's why I always recommend enough vegetables to be able to balance everything out too. Not just for, because they're alkaline, but because they have all the nutrients and the minerals too that you need to, uh, to help um, fortify the different organs that control pH. In other words, your pH is controlled by the kidney and your adrenal glands. So, um, but, it, but the thing is we don't want to just treat those glands. We want to understand some of these other mechanisms because many times it could be you're on medications or something like that that could be creating the pH. So I want to get you, I want to have you get the full scope of what's going on. So we got hypoglycemia. Okay, that's low blood sugars. So if you skip a meal and you get irritable uh, and you need food, then you could have a, it's a pre-diabetic situation because you have a history of eating a lot of sugar and then that can also make you too acid and of course diabetes can do that too. Diabetes comes from eating too much sugar and then you destroy that regulatory mechanism. So that can put you in an acid state. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the adrenal or the kidney. It could be pancreas. Um, junk foods will do it. That, of course, you know, if you eat all processed refined carbs, like all the refined grains, those are very acidifying. Um, sugar, of course, that's a given. Do you realize that the average person uh, consumes about 149 pounds of sugar a year? So every 13 years, they consume 2,000 pounds of, of sugar. That's a ton of sugar every 13 years. That's enough to create some interesting effects, wouldn't you think? I mean, what type of effects will create if you, if you do that to the pancreas long enough? I mean, sooner or later, it's going to be a problem. But I think in medicine, what they do is they'll wait until you get the disease, but they don't put enough attention on preventing it. Okay, so we got two acid. Now we got two alkaline. Stress, because the adrenals are kind of overworked, that will put you in an alkaline state. So people say that stress causes an acid state. No, it's actually an alkaline state. Um, why? Because the, when, the, when the adrenals are jacked up a lot, you start losing certain uh, things in the urine. You start losing your healthy acids, and then your blood pH goes, starts going up alkaline. And that's what happens with that. Um, so stress dumps acid, but it also dumps all the key things too, like uh, potassium and calcium and even salts. That's why at night, when you get home, if you're stressed out, you, meet, you might need a little salt for some reason to kind of balance some of the pHs. Okay, so we got vomiting will, will cause you to be too alkaline because you're losing all your, your um, acids. Um, and even in your gut, you have bacteria called lactobacillus, which makes lactic acid. You have acid-forming bacteria that really need to be there. And when you take antibiotics, it destroys those things. So we really um, need to not go too far one way or the other. Um, low stomach acids, every decade that you age past 40, you start losing your stomach acids and you're going to become too alkaline. So dehydration. This could be coming, this could come from too much water. Why? Because it's flushing out all the electrolytes and making you dehydration. It's not just not enough water, okay? Diuretics will wipe out all the different uh, key minerals that keep your pH in balance. Antiacids, that was me. I used to take tons and tons of Rolaids and things for my heartburn, but that will just mess you up too. You become more alkaline. Um, so I want to show you, if you can give me those three bottles right there, there are three things I'm going to show you if you have some of these. These are uh, kind of just quick remedies that you can take. But my point is that 
I really recommend that you just eat healthy and you don't have to worry about treating too alkaline or treating these symptoms. If you put back in the diet, everything will fall back into place. But here's a couple things that, I'm, that you may want to consider. Apple cider vinegar Bragg's is really a, a good thing to acidify the body because it has a lot of um, potassium and nutrients and electrolytes as well. So we got apple cider vinegar. Um, take a little teaspoon and some water. Um, I would recommend taking that maybe um, maybe one time a day for like a month and then wait a couple months and then do it again occasionally. Or carbonated water. This is one of my favorite. If you crave carbonated water or soda, chances are you're too alkaline. You're trying to get your body more acidic by taking carbonic acid. That's what this is. So this will help you. It feels like you're hydrated when you drink. Um, and then, of course, this is one of my favorite. This is some really high-level Italian volcano lemon juice. You get this at the health store Moms. But this stuff right here is very acidic, but it has all these great properties of fortifying the electrolytes. So you can do that, too, to help you with your pH. Okay? And then I just have one last point I want to mention to, um, in the next section. Okay, so real quick, I just want to explain something because a lot of people get heartburn and there's several disease states that are very um, counterintuitive. Um, for example, heartburn. Um, if you take Rolaids and antiacids, um, what you might not realize is that, that this pH of this stomach needs to be 1 to 3. That's like extremely acid. Now, if that pH goes higher and becomes more alkaline, which is always the case. Now the pancreas and the gallbladder, which have fluids that are very alkaline, okay, they're supposed to come in there and neutralize this acid, but they're controlled by the stomach. So if this stomach is not acid enough, these won't release in the right amount. So that acid will come down and mess things up down here. Now, so you get indigestion, you get constipation, you get lack of digestion, you get bloating and all these other things, right? If you measure the acid reflex that comes up from the esophagus, you're going to realize that that acid is very weak. It's not very strong. If it was really strong, it would burn a hole through your esophagus, but it never does. It's like a sour thing. So the, stump, the acid reflex that comes up is really coming from down here. It's a waste acid from the bowel called lactic acid, and it comes all the way up through here to try to compensate for the low stomach acids. So what, what do people do? They take an antioxidant and they make it more alkaline, which makes it worse than next time they eat and they never get better. There really is no profit into curing these conditions. It's all about managed care, put you on a pill so you can manage it the rest of your life. So just understand that the best thing to do for acid reflux is to take an acid. You can take betaine hydrochloride and get it from the health store, or you can do apple cider vinegar. You'll feel better. Um, but when you take any acids, like I did for years, it messed everything up because in order for this valve to close, this stomach pH has to be one and three. It's like really, really acid. So then this valve doesn't close. And then we can label this as another disease, disease called GERD, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. All that means is your valve's not closing because you're not acid enough, and, they, and then they give you medication, which actually makes, gives you some relief, but it never cures it. So, in other words, acid reflux is really not enough acid, okay? And then that can lead to an ulcer. So there's so many different labels all the way through here, you can call diverticulitis and Crohn's and um, pancreatitis and gallbladder syndrome and irritable bowel. All these things are really just a pH problem. So again, um, instead of treating it, understand it and apply some of these principles and just get your eating cleaned up and then everything will fall back into balance. Hope you enjoyed the seminar. I'll see you in the next one.